Right, so you'll be joined by former Peach United midfielder and manager Grant McCann. Grant, I want to talk to you about your, your playing days. So you joined from Scunthorpe at the start of the 2010 campaign. What do you remember about that signing? Yeah, I remember, I remember you know, with a decent season at Scunthorpe, but had a funny feeling that maybe some of the boys were going to leave, i.e. Hooper, Hayes, Nigel Adkins was talked about leaving. Um, and I felt, you know, in the summer I was in a bit of in between of what to do, whether do I stay, do I leave? Um, but I had a, I received a phone call from Gary Johnson um, in the summer um, and he, he just sold the club to me, really. Um, I knew who was at the club in terms of Mikel Smith, Boydie, McLean, um, to name a few. Um, and I had a funny feeling, obviously, with the relegation that Peterborough had from the Championship to League One, they were going to have a, you know, a really good season the season following. Um, obviously, given Gary's credentials and what he had done recently with Bristol City. Um, I thought it was a no-brainer for me, really. And when I came to the football club um, to meet Barry and Gary, um, they sold it to me right away. Um, you know, Gary, Gary had already previously told me that he would like to make me captain, which um, it put a little bit of fear into me, really, because I knew who was at the club already. I knew he had, I know Boyd, he had the armband. I know they were highly thought of for the fans. Um, it was going to be difficult for me to try to win the players over first and foremost um, before the manager and, 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 and the fans, really. So um, that, that is how it started, um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased I've done it. Yeah, was it was that hard, actually, as you say, because you're coming into an environment where there were a lot of established players. Did the first couple of weeks of pre-season, was, it, was the focus on the pitch or off the pitch or were you trying to find a, a balance between the two? A bit of both, a bit of both really, because I remember coming into the changing room and there must have been about 40 players in the changing room um, on my first day. Um, and I remember Gary was as ruthless as ever and he just went, you, 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 out. And all of a sudden there was about 18 left. Um, so it was, um, that, was a, that was an eye-opener for me. Um, but I mean, from there, you know, I think the group that was there, they were together. Um, the lads who weren't, they were just moved on. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it was trying to trying to strike a, a balance in between of the players, the manager, um, getting to know everybody, um, letting them know sort of way what I'm about as a person, as a player, trying to you know show them that I'm that I'm okay, I can play, I can play in your team, um, and and we just went from there really. Yeah, you actually scored on your debut um, in a win. I think it was against Bristol Rovers. I think you scored on your de- uh, the first game of the following season as well. Uh, that must be nice as a new player, particularly as a captain, to to lead from the front, get a victory straight away, and obviously get on the score sheet. Yeah, I mean that that that's that that was a, an ideal scenario for me. Um, I think we had a free kick. I think it was the third goal, was it? Mm. We had a free kick and um, into the box, and I fancied it, and um, it went in, and I, and you know. That, that just set us off, really, on probably a good start to the season that we had. Um, I think we were in and around the top six for long periods, right up to probably Christmas time. Um, so, yeah, scoring a lot of goals, conceding a lot of goals. But, I mean, what we were doing is, as a team was, you know, we were together. Um, and just remembering that season under Gary or Darren, um, the whole group was together, you know, whether it was on the pitch or off the pitch. Uh, what was Gary um, like as a, as a manager? What was he like in the dressing room? No, he was uh, he was straight to the point. Um, he was uh, he was far, 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 he, he wanted to make sure everyone got they got the best out of everyone. Um, you know, and look, he was great for me. Gary, you know, he brought me to the football club. I'm got a bad name. You know, I still speak to him to this day. And um, you know, we we played some good football under him. You know, and uh, the, the team was scoring goals. The team was creating chances. Um, it must have been a dream for people like Mikael Smith and McLean, Boydie, because the chances that, were, that we created a lot was, you know, was good on the day. So um, his management style was for me was good. It was straight to the point, um, and he and he made made sure you knew where you were where you were. Yeah, um, obviously, as you say, we were conceding a lot of goals as well um, as scoring the goals, and I, I guess there was a breaking point um, at some point. I mean, I remember the Charlton game that obviously was a heavy defeat and. Brighton, I think, won 3 0 um, on that flag day that Gary has sort of in, introduced. And I, I guess when when he left, uh, the players must have been quite shocked and, and surprised, given the fact that we weren't too far off the uh, playoff positions. Yeah, I mean, I think he had threatened to leave previously anyway. Um, there was a couple of incidents where, you know, uh, we thought he'd probably be going to leave. And I think maybe he took a U turn and came back again. Um, but as we know in football, you know, 
it's a results business and um, for one reason or another he left. Um, yes, we had a couple of heavy defeats, you know, leading into his, 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 his departure, but um, yeah, I think everyone was quite shocked um, when he left because it happened so quickly, really. Um, you know, and Darren was in almost like immediately. Um, and I remember the game when he left, I think David, was it David Oldfield took the game? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we won the game 2 1, and Darren was in, you know, in the change room before the game, after the game. And, and he went, we went on from there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it was what it was at the time. And as players, you just have to get on with it. Yeah, that game against Oldham, I think you, that was the day we won 2 1. I think Obika scored last minute. But the, what I remember about that game, I'm pretty sure you did the Paneka, the, the penalty, the little dink down the middle. Um, which is quite brave, given the fact that a manager might be sitting waiting in the wings. <laughs> yeah, I remember Darren saying to me afterwards, he said, just, he said I don't mind you doing that penalty, it makes you one of them. And, uh, you know, it stuck with me, that little conversation he had with me um, at a time. But yeah, you know, that was a, I think it was a turning point in RC. You know, um, we obviously went on a couple of defeats, lead. And then obviously Darren came in and... and uh, what, what did he say to the players, um, you know, the day after or in the dressing room after to sort of give you confidence that the season was going to end how you wanted it to end? Um, well, I think a lot of the players knew Darren before. Um, obviously, they had a really successful period, you know, before he left to go to Preston. Um, so I'd, I'd already had a little flavour of what he was about and, and how his teams play. You know, a lot of the boys had told me before he'd come in. And I guess as a as a player to coming into the football club brought under Gary, initially I'm thinking, is he going to like me? Is he going to play me? Um, you know, and I think the, the first conversation that he had with me as a person, you know, I remember sitting in his office and he said, look, I like you as a player. I think you struggle playing in a two. Um, and once he said that to me, I'm thinking, oh, here we go. I'm not going to play here. Um, but for him to change me into that deeper role in midfield to... Um, give me more license to get on the ball, a bit more freedom, um, you know, and to see things around me a bit more. You know, his, his coaching was really, really good. Um, and I've got huge respect for the way he developed me in that season and beyond, really, um, on how my game probably came, came you know, and, and I'd probably say it's probably the best best season of my career, um, you know, best half a season of my career playing under Darren because I felt as if I got a lot out of my game. But, to move me into that role, I think, was a, you know, very good for me. Yeah, I spoke to Tommy Rowe, and obviously when you play in a, a formation like a diamond and you've got a deep line midfielder, the two in front, that was obviously Rowe at times, Freck played in there, there was a couple of us, really had to do a lot of the sort of running to cover across the distances. And um, Rowe said that at yeah. first it was uh, hard to get adjusted to. Um, of course, he was doing all your running as well, wasn't he? So that's probably why. Exactly. I think Darren was very clever having people like Tommy Rowe, Frex, Wes Olosky in and around me, I tell you. Um, and even Boydie. So um, I needed a lot of legs around me. But no, I mean, you know, just just, just the movement, the rotation, um, the freedom that Darren gave the, the four in there um, to play was was great. You know, and just because I was playing in a deeper role didn't mean I could, you know, could find myself on the edge of the box having, having a shot. So... Yeah, the movement, the rotation was excellent and there was a lot of hard work on the training ground to make that happen because ultimately we didn't want to leave the middle of the pitch, you know, wide open at times and expose Gabby or Benno or Kevin, Kelvin Langmaid, whoever was, who was going to play in that position. So we always had to make sure one of us stayed in that position to maybe re regain attacks or, or start attacks again. Yeah, I spoke to a few players about um, how you ended up on penalties because obviously McLean and Mikel Smith um, a striker's wanted penalties. Did you did you say, look, I'm on them, I'm captain, deal with it? How did it work? Did you have a penalty comp or was it just look at my record and that's it? No, well, I initially seen the two of them taking penalties in training and I thought, look, they're, good, they're two good players, but they just can't take penalties. <laughs> um, so I had to have a quiet word in their ear to say, look, you know, if we're going to be serious about this, you need to come off the penalties. Um, so, uh, yeah, I initially did that. But um, no, the penalties were something that I've always done in my career, really. Um, so I took it into Peterborough. Um, I didn't practice a lot of them really because it's, it's, I think it's very hard to it's very hard to recreate on a training ground what's going to happen in a game. So it's it's basically instinct and making sure you you have a good connection on the ball or or you know exactly where that keeper has been. You know we did a lot of work in terms of um, well it was Barry Richardson the goalkeeping coach at the time. He did a lot of work on opposition goalkeepers making sure 
he's dove this way for his last three penalties or that way. So there were the little bits and pieces that we had in behind the scenes. Yeah, you, you had a bit of an interesting technique, didn't you, in terms of taking steps to the right? Was that was that something that you were thinking is just more is just comfortable for you, or was it designed to put the keeper off, or is it just came naturally to you? It was it was probably designed to put the keeper off a bit and make him guess, you know, and and double guess him a wee bit. So I felt as if I could, if I had a little step, one or two steps to the right, I could go either way, um, and I was confident in my setup then. So it was just something something that that, that came across me. Um, I don't even think I practice it in, in training. I think it just came on a game. Um, because a lot of people have told me before, you know, you should never turn around and not face the goalkeeper when you're taking a penalty. You always look at him and step back. But I felt as if I didn't look at him and I just had a little step, I'd probably double guessed him. So hopefully it worked. Was there any a penalty that you didn't fancy? Was there, Was there ever a time where you put the ball down and thought? I'm not confident. Me, I know. I remember you missing one. I think I was against Carlisle, yeah. wasn't it? I think in the yeah, yeah. Anyway, was that just because of the situation of the game was so comfortable that maybe mentally you'd not tuned into it, or was it just one of those that the keeper's going to save for a couple of eventually? Yeah, I mean, I always felt confident. I mean, even when I even when I missed one against Carlisle, I felt I was going to you know I'd score the next one. But I always had Lee Tomlin in the air saying, "Look, I'll take the next one. I'll take it. I'll take it." So. It was uh, he was a nightmare at that trying to trying to do things he got. But no, I always felt confident in taking penalties. I always felt as if I'd, you know, if I hit the target and I put it in a, in a place where I want to put it, I'd have a good chance of going in. Yeah. Before we talk about the playoffs, the the, the did, did you uh, your squad or the squad that we had at that time? Would you have been disappointed had you not got into the playoffs, given the ability that was undoubtedly in that squad? Yeah, definitely. I think we knew. I think we knew, you know, and I think definitely when Darren came in. We went into games thinking, you know, we're we're winning this game. You know, there was very little done on the opposition. It was about us. Um, it was how we are going to beat them. You know, that's just the way we approached every game. And you looked around the team and you, you just felt confident. You know, whether it was the fullbacks bombing forward, whether it was Benno stepping in from the back, whether it was the movement and the rotation in midfield, whether it was two forwards creating chances, scoring goals, or whoever may play it at in any given game. We just felt confident that we could score more goals in the opposition and ultimately I think that created the Peterborough way really you know and, and, and what fans have seen over the years since is is uh, you know the Peterborough team scoring a lot of goals. Yeah the, the, the playoff semi-final first leg um, obviously um, your penalty in the end proved massive because we could have easily lost that game four. I remember Bodic missing a chance obviously after Chaz got sent off we had a lot of injuries during that game but Obviously, Litz winning that penalty and you sticking it away was was crucial in the end. Yeah, I mean the MK Dons game was. I mean, I felt we played okay in the game. Uh, we weren't we weren't excellent, but we 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 were okay. Um, when we went down to three one, we had obviously Char Charlie Lee got sent off. We were thinking, here we go. You know, this is going to be difficult now to to get back into this. But for Litz to get a penalty after being brought down on the halfway line was amazing for everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that was just a little bit of luck I think we needed at the time. Um, and to get that, you know, the second goal to take it to London Road, we knew that we knew how confident we are at home. We knew that when the place is bouncing that we can we could beat anybody there. That's, that's the way we felt. Mm. Um, so, it was it, the sec I think that that goal to get it to 3-2 made everybody realise that we can that we can do it. Yeah, I always remember the, uh, the the free kick in the second leg um, because I don't I don't think um, I mean a Sky commentator will will claim that he probably said that you were going to do it given the fact that's how his commentary went. But um, when you put that ball down, did you think right? I, I don't care. This is where it's going to go. I'm going to try and whip it that way. Keeper keeper's going to be hidden behind the wall. Did it all go to plan in your head? Is is that how the connection came about? Yeah, I remember I remember looking at the free kick because it was in a it was in a similar position. Um, to one I had previously, I think a few weeks back, and and I, and I crossed it. So I remember looking at the free kick, thinking, well, the wall's not the bravest for a start. So I thought, mm. I know the two lads in the wall, and I know they made the move out of the way. Um, and I'm thinking, well, David Martin's giving me a wee bit of space there on his in, in his left left side inside post. Um, it had to go in because I know Darren would have hammered me if I hadn't. Um, because uh, it was a good position to cross it and maybe to get Gabby on the end of something. But I felt I felt really confident. I felt this target, I'd try and get it over and over and under the wall quickly, or sorry, over the top of the wall quickly and, and to come down um, quickly. Then it, it, I've got a good chance and fortunately winning. 
Yeah, and, and on to the the final. Uh, Rory was probably the only one in the squad who was quite happy as Old Trafford being a United fan. Um, that whole weekend, I mean, I can remember everything about it. I'm guessing there's players that you can as well. Yeah, I mean, the weekend was brilliant. You know, for us to go up there for a couple of days and I think we stayed at Worsley, Worsley in Manchester in the hotel, lovely hotel, you know. Um, I think the big thing I remember about that really is, because um, obviously, you know, I like my golf. Um, and it's got a lovely golf shop there. And I, I remember looking in the golf shop and Darren walked past and, and it was like an R9 driver, about 400 quid's worth. I could never afford it. And uh, I was standing looking at it and thinking, I'd love that driver. And Darren said, if you, if you score tomorrow and we win, I'll buy you that driver. I went, you're joking. So I remember looking at it and thinking, I took it out to the range and everything and think, I really want this driver. Um, but yeah, the whole weekend was, was amazing. Um, the game itself, I think we went and had a look at the pitch beforehand, so we got a feel for Old Trafford. Uh, I remember just walking out there with the boys and thinking, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? this place is unbelievable. Um, and then just the game itself, you know, it was it was uh, amazing to be involved in. Um, Rory said that um, for the first goal, that was something that you'd obviously worked on. You knew about the delivery, but you worked on it in training in terms of getting across the front man. Was your role just to put it in an area and, and, and then let the rest sort of take care of itself? Or did it go exactly yeah. as planned? Roy was brilliant at that. Roy was unbelievable at getting across people and flicking things. And um, he was brave at that. And so we knew we could isolate Tommy Roll because obviously we maybe take away you know, the, the bigger markers would have went with Gabby or, or Benno or, you know, probably making sure they're in around Mikel Smith or Boyd or whoever it may be, you know, the dangers in the area. Uh, and we knew we probably could isolate Roy and maybe get a block, you know, use somebody as a block and get Roy across the front post. So my job was really just to get it on target um, with as much pace as possible. And, you know, Tommy's done the rest. Um, speaking to Chris Welkdale, he, was, he is claiming that he played a massive role in the third goal um, by getting out of the way. And speaking to others, they actually said that that is something that you genuinely worked on in training, that you wanted someone to sort of get, as soon as you approach, yeah. get out of the way. Is, is, is that exactly um, how it worked? I remember Welps just came on and, and I remember calling him over and saying, Welps, stand here. And I can, remember, I can remember him looking at me thinking, what, 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 do you, what do you want me to do? I went, just stand here. And as soon as I run up, just move to your, to, to your right. Just move. And he went, okay, okay. And I'm thinking, as I'm running up, I'm thinking, well, smooth. That's, I can remember thinking that. Um, but he did it perfectly. He just moved and it just opened. Again, it's just keeping the goalkeeper guessing. I think we worked on that because it obviously had seen me during the season. Um, they probably knew where I was going to go. Obviously, the first free kick maybe put the keeper off as well because I went the other side for Tommy Rose flick. So, again, I just fancied it. I thought, you know, this will be nice and the cake for us if we can get this one, and, you know. Uh, I'm thankful it went in. And, and your reaction when uh, when it did go in? I mean, some people would run the length of the field. Some people would be doing Kinsman dives. The game's probably over at 3-0. You, you went into a different kind of mode. Yeah, um, there's a story behind that. Um, to be honest with you, I think, I think the chairman was trying to wind me up. But I remember sitting the night before the game. Um, and I remember, you know, looking back on it now, and obviously I've been there as a manager and stuff, I, I completely understand. But... Um, I remember him saying to Lee Tomlin, "If we get free kicks tomorrow, I want you to take them." And in the meeting before the game, or sorry, in the watching the Man United game the night before, mm. and I'm sitting there spewing, you know, and thinking, "We've got a game tomorrow. I've scored a few free kicks this season. He wants Tomlin to take a free kick." And Tom was Tom would come over and told me, "Went the chairman wants me to take the free kicks tomorrow." And I, I remember just going in the room, and I was rooming my Wes lost game. Wes was the same. Wes was going, "Hi, can you ask people to take free kicks? You've scored this, blah blah blah." But I remember just, uh, I think I pointed to the chairman when I scored. I think I was pointing up to the chairman. He said, you want Tomlin to take it? <laughs> I think that's what it was. And, um, and did you get the driver? I got the driver. Darren, and to be honest, I'm surprised he remembered because the night, the night we had after winning the game, I don't think anyone you know, would have remembered anything in the, the next day. But Darren brought me the driver down. I was absolutely buzzing. Um, brought it home and got it, got it out in the open. And, and does it still exist, or have you smashed it up since? No, well, it's old now, so it's about ten years old. I've still got it. I've still got it in my garage, but it's um, no, it was a, it was it was amazing for him to do that for me. I couldn't I couldn't believe he remembered, but I was really thankful at the time. 
the following season, I think you got eight goals in the championship that, that first year we were in the championship and um, some free kicks, some, some goals from open play against Derby, which we, we saw quite recently. Um, you know, you had a, a real good habit um, of, of scoring goals, important goals, also from open play and, and sort of timing your run. Was that difficult given the formation that we were playing to, to pick your moment? Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, getting into that, getting into that championship season again, we felt confident. Obviously, we lost, we lost. Sorry, we lost. We lost Craig Mikel Smith, um, which was a big loss for us. But um, Darren replaced him. You know, we brought in uh, Paul Taylor was in and around the building at the time. Um, again, an unbelievable talent. You know, probably one of the best I've played with in terms of when he's on his day. How quick, how strong, how skillful, how powerful he was. Um, but yeah, just the championship season. That that championship season. I mean, we I think we we started really well till Christmas, didn't we? I think we were in a really good position. Um, we felt as if we had a, we had a chance. And I'm, I'm, you know, speaking to the boys and the group and the changing room and everything, we felt as if we had a chance to push on and and try and get into that top half and push for the top six. But you know, it wasn't to be. Yeah, you mentioned Paul Taylor there. You probably took him under your wing more than anyone else. In fact, he, he would look back on it and say, well, he had his best time, obviously, with you in the side. You've got to become a little bit of a father figure to him. Um, he, he had, as you say, people talk about Tomlin and people talk about Boyd in terms of natural ability. Has no one come close, really, to Tails in terms of what he could do on his day? No, and, and you're right. I mean, when we initially seen him in training, because I'd never seen him before, we thought, well, who's this? You know, and I'm thinking like he's he's a little stocky boy. He didn't speak to anybody. Um, I don't know whether he was rude or shy. He just didn't didn't embrace or engage with anyone. Um, and I remember sitting down with him one day, saying, "What's wrong with you?" And he went, "What do you mean?" I went, What's, "I said you haven't spoke to anybody for you know for two three weeks. You know, you need to if you want to be part of this group, you're going to have to engage. You're going to have to be a part of the group." Um, and ever since that moment. We, we clicked a little bit, you know, and um, he come and sat with me, he sat with me at dinner, he wanted to know what's going on. Um, and hopefully I helped him a little bit, you know, hopefully I, I helped him um, off the pitch, on the pitch. Obviously he was a hard man to control off the pitch, but um, hopefully I helped him in and around the training ground, in and around the stadium uh, and, and on the football pitch because we knew what he could do, you know. And um, I think the biggest thing what Darren did was well was, was control people like Tails, like Tomlin. Um, you know the big characters in the changing room that you needed to make sure uh, Mendes Lang another one that you needed to make sure you're always on to um, and he controlled them really well yeah what was Tomo like I mean obviously we know what he's like as a as a person as a player in the, in the dressing room was he because he, he obviously um, had a, a shy element to him but also he had the kind of crazy elements as well he's sort of a yin and yang was he was he a difficult person to read in the dressing room um he was a confident boy Tomo, um, you know, he's, there's days in training when, he, when you wouldn't see him, there's days when he could have been unbe unbelievable, but when you put him on a pitch on a Saturday, you know, the ability that he had um, just to, you know, people, people look at Tomo and think, well, he was overweight, he, was, he couldn't run, he was neither, you know, he was just, he was such a strong boy, quick, can run away from people, technically unbelievable, can create a chance out of nothing. Um, the ability, the ability he's got and still has, and he's still doing it in the championship is is frightening. You know, probably one of the best players I've played with, to be honest. That's how that's how much I'd rate him. Um, and I felt as if every time I received the ball, I could Tom was always in a good position. I could find him. Um, but yeah, off the pitch, difficult. You know, um, trying to control him. He was a young lad, obviously, and he's in the championship and. Um, he's come from Rushton and Diamond so in a, and all of a sudden in a year and a half or two he's, he's playing in the championship so you had to keep him under control a little bit um, Darren did that really well and, and hopefully I played my part you know, as a captain in the team as well to, to try and control him Speaking to Gabby Zakwani, he said that the first day that he came into the building he basically smashed Mikel Smith in the training session um, did you go anywhere near Gabs in a training session because he said he sort of Asked. He said he played at 70% during training and, and on a Thursday and a Friday, the gaffer told him basically, look, you need to be playing at about 50%. We don't want to, we've got a game on Saturday, go a little bit easy. Were you anywhere near him at all? I stayed away from him, honestly. I stayed well away from him because whether it was training, whether it was a five-a-side, whether it was a, you know, even, a, even if you were doing a little ball passing drill, Gabby could still tackle you, honestly. Um, and he would still leave a bit on you. So I just stayed away from him. You know, he's absolutely man-mountain. He, he wasn't the biggest of boys, Gabs, you know. He's not like, 
he's not like six foot six and but just so strong would hit anything would kick anything wasn't a scared of anybody um huge respect in the changing room with all the boys uh, and again Gabby helped me a lot as well to be fair when I first came into the football club because he looked to me like a captain you know and I asked him a lot of questions and he helped me and um, we, we struck up a good relationship really on and off the pitch for Gabs so he was uh, yeah, a really really good player top pro Yeah that season obviously ended I think we finished about 16th 17th in the end obviously going into the next campaign always going to be difficult second time around did you, did you feel that you could build on what was achieved in that first campaign or were you a little bit fearful that you know the teams were a bit stronger and it was always going to be difficult to, to have that uh, unpredictability yeah, I mean, I think it was always going to be difficult because, you know, the championship, the budgets in the league are unbelievable. You know, we knew what we were coming up against. Um, I don't think I played in the first five or six games. Um, I remember that. I, th- I don't think we had the best of starts, but I didn't. I know I didn't play. In f- that wasn't to do why I didn't play. I'm just saying I didn't play. Um, I think we, uh, we didn't have the best of starts. I think we won five, six, seven games without a win. Um, but then something just clicked again. I think we, we, we got our mojo back. We... We made a few good signings coming in. Um, obviously, Gailey came in. Um, you know, I think uh, Saido Barahino came in. Um, with, with George Thorne came in at, at the time as well. So, I mean, we are making some good signings. Um, and we started to click. And we started to build a bit of momentum. But ultimately, I think the start to the season possibly cost us. You know, right at the end, obviously, we know what happened. You mentioned Sado Berahino there. I mean, I always maintain that he was one of the loveliest guys you ever get to chat to. And obviously, he made a big impact in terms of goals that he scored. I'm quite surprised it all went a bit downhill for him. He, he, was, he, was he a nice guy to sort of work with on the training field? Training field? Yeah, really quiet. Sado was really quiet. You know, unbelievable ability. Left foot, right foot. Um, we had no problems with Sado. You know, and obviously, I know there's been a lot made of him recently in, in press and stuff like that. But we never seen that, you know, really good lad. Um, just came in every day with a smile on his face to ready to work. So um, I'm not sure what's going on, obviously, over the last mm. few months with him. But um, when he was with us, he was great. Uh, you mentioned Dwight Gale there. I remember when um, Barry rang me and he said, oh, we're signing this lad. He's been out on loan at Stansted. He scored 50-odd goals at Stansted. Hasn't played really much at Dagenham. We're going to be signing him. And I'm thinking... In the championship, is he? He's he's going to come in and, and play. And about, oh yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll play. And I remember watching him at Ipswich away. I think it was his debut. He came off the bench and um, he, he just looked quick. He looked strong. Were, were you surprised when you first saw him how good he potentially could have been? Yeah, I mean, initially when when Gailey came in, I remember we're sitting in the changing room, we're thinking, is this the answer? Is this what's going to keep us, you know, in the league? Mm. Um, you know, and and I think when, once he first came in and the boys got used to and seen him, again, quiet lad, really, you know, calm, just down to earth. Um, I think the game when he came on against Ipswich and then after that when we seen him, we just knew that the, this kid's going to be special. Um, and Barry and the football club in particular, the chairman and, and Darren, that real neck of that, picking non-league talent, bringing him through, making him into you know, multi-millionaires, as you've seen. So we knew Gailey was going to be everything. Um, again, phenomenal finisher. His movement was the move. His movement was is what made Gailey. Um, never stood still. Always moving. Always on the on the run. Um, he was a bit of a nightmare as a midfield player to play with at times because he'd make one run then another, and you'd probably make your pass look stupid, you know. But you just had to get on the same wavelength as him because he was he was making two three runs before you even received the ball, which is ultimately what's made him a. You know, a top top class player in the Premier League and and the Championship over recent years. Obviously, towards the end of that campaign, we were picking up results. I remember that win against Sheffield Wednesday. I think you scored the winner, didn't you? Free kick, um, sort of to the back stick, and and at that point, everything obviously looked rosy. Did did you? It's hard to talk about because nobody wants to look back in, on that day. Everyone we speak to is is saying the sort of same thing, sort of gloss over it a little bit. Um, yeah. Did you feel going into it that you were secure in any way, shape, or form? Um, I felt after the Sheffield Wednesday game that we were going to do it. I really did. I felt after that game, and I think it was a real belief in the change in that we can go to Chris, we can go to Crystal Palace and win. Um, you know, after that game, I think the you know the fans were jubilant. You know, we're coming off the pitch. I remember it. I think I think everyone thought we were going to do it. You know, and 
for us to go there. Did, did we go one? I think we went one nil up. Yeah, Tom scored an Tom unbelievable. Goal. Up. Yeah, yeah. Goal. So 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 we went one nil up, and I'm, we were all thinking well, we're going to do this. I remember um, they equalised, and then I think was it Gailey gave a free kick away, mm. which was never a free kick. And I remember speaking to Damien Delaney, I think it was at the time. I said, look, use your, use your in the playoffs. We're safe. You don't need to just hit it down the line. Um, and he went, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll hit it down the line. And I remember someone over and took the free kick and he had that ends up in the end of it. So it was, yeah, that feeling that day is probably one of the worst feelings I've had in football. It really is. Um, I remember seeing my parents outside and my wife, Kelly's parents outside, and I just couldn't speak to them. I just couldn't speak to them. I felt, I felt, I felt horrible, sick, mm. really, really sick. Yeah, sometimes you can go down and it'd it be, you know, you, you do all you can, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that hit the club hard, didn't it, in terms of the nature of it and the amount of points we got and the fact it was in the last minute and, you know, it almost felt like the summer was a hangover that just wouldn't go away. Yeah, it did. And then there was obviously speculation whether Darren was going to stay and everyone was wondering what's going to happen and. It just it just the whole knock on effect of it wasn't right all over the summer, you know, and um yeah, that day will will live in my memory for I don't want it to live there, but it'll live in my memory as one of the worst days, you know, I've had as a as a football, you know, being in football for over well over twenty years now. Just the whole feeling because we felt we we were on a really good run. We're picking some really good points up. I think we're in the top ten in terms of form form guide. Um after Christmas. I think we were I think we were really, really good. So um, for us to lose it on that day, um, and everyone talks about it, I think it's the record points that someone's been down in the championship with, uh, and it still is to this day. So it just shows you how well we actually did after Christmas to to produce the fight that we showed. Let's talk about some some positivity after that, because I, I almost feel like I'm going to cry. Um, the, the, the game against um, Birmingham was probably one of your best free kicks that you scored in your career, I would imagine. I, uh, I know you had friends and family in the in the stand behind the goal as well. Um, wh- what can you remember about that particular goal? Um, yeah, again, it was probably a similar sort of position as the MK Dons um, free kick um, the previous previous year. So, again, uh, it was probably more hope hope than than anything. Really, I'm thinking I've got a chance here to 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 just go go over the wall. And try and get in at the near post again. It was a bit of a gap. I can't remember the keeper at the time. It might have been, was it, it might have been league camp. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, been league camp. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I remember he gave me a bit of space again. I'm thinking if I can get over that wall and get it, get it dipping down, I've got a chance. Um, I don't think we were particularly good in the game. We didn't create many chances. I think Birmingham were one. I think they were one nil up at the time. Um, and I thought, well, why not? You know, we haven't had much of a much of a look in here. Let's have a, it's a free chance to, to have a shot. And ultimately, you know, it's gone in. For fortunate, fortunately for me, it went in, and um, I was delighted. You sort of mastered the John Cena celebration. From that became your celebration. <laughs> I think it became iconic as a celebration. Um, I think you've told the story before. It was your kids, wasn't it? Watching WWE. Is that where it came from? Yeah, the boys love WWE. They still do to this day. To be honest, and um, John Cena is still their favourite. So it was more to do with my little boy Bailey and and, and Jesse at the time because they loved the loved the wrestling. Yeah. Did you ever think of doing any other celebration? I can't remember you ever doing anything other than that, really, apart from, you know, shouting at the chairman, perhaps, in the, in the old traffic. <laughs> no, I mean, nothing, really. I just, that wasn't one for celebrations. I remember I dove into the snow once at London Road. I can't remember who I was against, but um, I think I scored a goal right at the end and I dove into the snow and little did I know the snow was ice. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I didn't have, I wasn't really one for celebrations, really. I was just, it was John Cena, but that was it. Yeah, in terms of um, the, the the following season, obviously it was it was a challenge, wasn't it? I, I guess you mentioned the gaffer. And obviously, people didn't really know where he was going to stay on. Did, did it feel right, or did it feel a little bit like something was missing? Um, well, initially we thought he was going to Darren was going to leave again because I know he was really hurt after it, and there was a lot of talk um, that he, you know, he got us so far and he didn't want to do it again and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we were delighted that he stayed. Um, I remember at the time we were all delighted. And we're thinking, well, can we have another push? Can we do it again? Um, you know, again, the, the squad's strong for League One. So we thought we, we can have another really good go at the, at the playoffs or or even winning the league. Um, so, again, it was it was difficult initially. But I think once we settled down, we, we got the grips with it. And we, you know, we, we, we pushed on. 
Yeah, obviously the players were never to be going to leave, weren't they, from um, uh, from the championship campaign? Obviously Dwight Gale, I think, left at the end of that campaign, obviously, to join Palace. I think Brett Sombolonga yeah. came in, didn't he, as the um, sort of replacement? And he, as, as a striker that you've played with, was he the most selfish? In t- and I don't mean that in a bad way, but in terms of the type of striker he was, it wasn't like, so he scored X amount of goals and someone else scored X amount of goals. It was him, really, that led the line, wasn't it? Yeah, Brett, Brett's, Brett's similar to Mikel Smith, to be honest. Um, really selfish in front of the goal. Um, you know, the both of them get a chance and they shoot it. McLean's the same. You know, all three of them are the same. Gailey's probably a bit different. Gailey, if he's through and he sees somebody else in a better position, he'd, he'd find him. Tomlin is similar. Uh, but them three were just ruthless. You know, they were the three of them were just, if they get a chance, they shoot. I mean, Craig and, and Aaron had competitions all the time. Uh, to see he scored the most goals even in training but Britt was the same Britt was exactly the same he just wanted to score left foot right foot um, he wasn't lightning quick he wasn't like Gailey but he bundled, bundled his way through things and really really strong boy and again what an unbelievable career he's gone on to have mm, obviously that ended with, I think that season was the JPT season in terms of um, in terms of that success, um, I always find it interesting when you talk about the, uh, the Johnson Paint Trophy or the Football League trophies it is now in terms of what it means to players. Because I'd imagine in the first couple of rounds you, you kind of see it as you know an obligation to to, to play, or, yeah. or do you, or you or, or was it the case that right we're going to win this, we're going to try and win it? I want you to give exactly the same as you would in a league game. How did, how did you get yourself up for those kind of games? I remember Darren Sainte at the start of the year. Look, we want to get promoted. We want to win the Johnson Spain Trophy, um, and that was the that, that was the expectations. Um, w- me as a person, I like that. I like the challenge, and I know the group like the challenge. And as the competition went on, and we were getting closer and closer, and we got we ended up getting to the final. Um, we we felt as if we could win it. You know, we we knew we were going to to, to Wembley. You know, the day for the fans, it was everything. Uh, I know the chairman really, really big on it as well in terms of trying to win the ch- the check of trade or the Johnson's paint, whatever it's called. Um, that's check of trade now, isn't it? Mm. I think it's called. Or yeah, so some com or something like that. Yeah, but don't matter to you yeah. in the championship. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, um, we always wanted to have a good opportunity um, to do that. And we got to the final and we're playing against a really good Chesterfield team. I remember that. And, mm. you know, they, they had some good players, Gary Roberts particularly and Sam Morrissey in midfield. And um, they were strong. Um, but I think we started the game really well. I remember we started the game really well. Uh, we scored off a, off a corner, I think. Yeah, yeah, Br- Sean, Brisley, yeah, yeah. Sean, Sean Brisley scored. And then we scored off another corner. Um, I can't remember who scored the second Josh one. McCoyd. Josh McCoy. Josh yep, same. I think it was from a Danny Swanson corner. And then um, Brits gets a penalty at the end. Obviously, I wasn't on the pitch or he wouldn't have been taking it. Um, but um, what was he, Brits what gets was a penalty it? to seal it. I spoke, I spoke to Brett about this, about his actual penalty technique, because he swung his arm like he was doing some kind of robot as he was taking it. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I've no idea. He, I mean, he put it straight down the middle. It was not the greatest penalty I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Were you watching from the sidelines thinking, what is he doing here? I, I have no idea what he was doing, to be honest. I'd never seen him take penalties, really. I think he was in such good form in terms of his goals that we all knew he was going to score anyway. So I think Brick could have done anything and the ball would have went in because mm. he was just he was just getting all the fortune, everything he was doing. He was making his own luck, of course. But we knew that he would score. Um, and when he scored, that was it. You know, we, we knew we'd won it. Uh, again, celebrations afterwards was a, were brilliant, although we didn't. It wasn't like the playoff game because we had to quickly go back into league games. But um, again, that was a, you know, another good, good moment in my career with, with Peterborough. Yeah, and, and, and as you look back in your career as, as a total, obviously three promotions, were obviously one at Wembley in the, in the JPT, you pretty much ticked off quite a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, three yeah, three promotions, at one at Cheltenham, one at Scunthorpe, one at Peterborough, all at different venues. Um, I don't think anyone's done that before. I think it was all to do with Wembley wasn't ready or whatever it was, but uh, the Millennium Stadium, Wembley, and then Old Trafford. So, um, yeah, three amazing days. Um, but the big one, the one that sticks out for me really the most is is the Peterborough one, especially because the way the season went and changing manager halfway through it and things like that, it just it just sticks in your mind. Um, all the two days before, the the night after, um, and just everything around it. When when you've had such success, such, such success over a long period of time and enjoying it, is it hard when it ends? 
I mean, I'm talking from a player perspective in terms of when you left, because often some people get to a point and they say, well, I fancy a new challenge or I, you know, I've, I've got interest here, this and the other. Was it difficult to sort of say goodbye? It makes you sound very emotional. To leave, <laughs> to leave, to leave Peterborough mm. as a player? Yeah, it was hard. I mean, I was coming to it. I was coming to it, obviously, an age where I was getting injections in my back. Probably people don't know this, but... Um, I've got a degenerative disc disease in my back where I'm struggling to, you know, to train day after day after day. I remember getting out of my car, you know, coming back, and my wife's looking at me, thinking, "What are you doing?" You know, um, but I knew that I was coming to an age where at, at Peterborough, you know, if you come to a certain age and the, 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 the club like younger players, they like that. I know, I understand that, you know. And um, I was coming into my coaching. I was doing my coaching badges. I was helping with the fifteens. I, I was just in between. I really was. It was just in between. It just didn't stick with me. And I remember saying to Darren, I said, look, what, what am I doing? Am I playing? Am I coaching? Um, and I just I just don't think we knew, you know. And um, there was other players coming into the club, younger, fitter, stronger. It was just coming to an end. And I knew I had to continue to play. And I, and, and that's when I initially went back to, to, to play with Linfield and, and just to carry on my career. I probably could have stayed here in England somewhere, but I always wanted to play with Linfield. I always wanted to play from a hometown club. and I'm fortunate enough they got a chance to do that for seven or eight games. Yeah, and, and because obviously we, when we started this interview, we had a little bit of a connection issue. We were talking about Gary Johnson, and obviously he brought you into the football club. Um, was it, I, I mean, we, we, we spoke about the fact that obviously you, it was the, the sort of right time to leave Scunthorpe. Did, did Gary, um, his, his record at Bristol City, did he sort of speak about the fact that he wanted to, to be a project because I, I, I was in, because it was quite a coup when we got him um, in terms of Gary yeah. Johnson because of what he'd achieved. Did, did you feel you were buying into a project with that? Yeah, definitely. When he spoke to me in the summer and, and he, 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 he outlined what he wanted to do, um, the players who were already at the club, like I said, you know, people like Mikhail Smith, Boyd, um, Aaron McLean, you know, these, these three in particular, I'm thinking, well, if I can come and help uh, and play on that team and help provide them goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, then we've got a chance. Um, and he told me over the summer that he was going to bring me in and make me make me the captain of the club, and and just everything felt right. You know, I'm leaving a team that was in the championship to step up to to come to a team in League One that was going for promotion. So um, it was a big decision in my career to leave the championship to go to League One, but it was the right decision. Um, and Gary sold it to me, and Barry sold it to me, and you know, I'm really pleased I've done it. And, and during your um, playing days at Peterborough in its entirety, you would have seen quite a number of people get pranked in a dressing room, I'd imagine. Who was the chief prankster? Because you would never far away from a, a little joke. Yeah, as long as it was just OK, you know, but um, nothing over the top. Of it. Otherwise, we'd, uh, we'd have people coming down on us. But yeah, you, you know, people like Tomlin was never far away from it. Um, Daniel Kearns, when he came in. Um, was always around, joking, joking around the changing rooms. But there was quite a few. Mendes Lang, um, another one, Mark Little. You know, people like this. They all there was always things going around the changing room. But it was all good banter, all good fun. There was never anything malice or anything that got about it. And I think that's what made you know my time at Peterborough in terms of the squads we had over the three or four years. You know, really good because we always had a really good changing room. Um, and the manager always made sure that he, he treated people people differently. Everyone was treated the same. Um, because he knew that we had different age groups, different characters, different personnel, um, and that's what ultimately made us, you know, successful. And, and and just finally, obviously, as you got into management, do you, did you start learning from coaches and managers while you were playing? Were you someone that, you know, when you were listening to a team talk, you were thinking, yeah, I can see why he's done that? Because a lot of players just sit, listen to it, go out and play, and it, it, they forget about it. But I'd imagine you probably remember quite a lot of things that were said to you from coaches or managers during your time at Posh. Yeah, definitely. I think you learn off everybody, don't you? Um, all the managers of Peter, Peterborough, well, all the managers, Gary and Darren, really, um, I've learned off them um, in terms of the way I'd approach a team talk or a way I'd coach in a training ground or what I may use to, to do in a certain game plan, whatever it may be. Um, I've learned off them. I've learned off previous managers of previous clubs. And you know, I've always spoke to you about Nigel Adkins and the influence he had me at, at Scunthorpe. So, I've got I've had so much you know experience in terms of that. Uh, luckily enough to have quite a few managers, um, and that doesn't because they lost their jaws. It's just because I had a few clubs and international managers and things they got. So um, to learn off everybody and then to ultimately make it your own 
uh, is 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 a challenge in itself, and hopefully I've done that.